So for sending notifications, earlier people would use this cloud messaging API, the legacy version from Firebase. But the thing is, Firebase discontinued this version in 2023. So now you need to use the Firebase cloud messaging API version 1. And in this version, Firebase doesn't give you a client secret directly. Instead, you have to download a file of credentials and use a package called Firebase Admin, which uses this credential file and dynamically uses Firebase API to send notifications from Django. So now let's continue with downloading the credentials file. Service accounts. Scroll down and generate new private key. Then generate key. You now have a file containing your credentials. Go to this file. Cut this and move it to your project. I'm putting this on the same level as the manage.py file. Then rename this to an easier name that you can remember. I'm naming this as credentials.json. Now back to the console. Click on python. Copy this code and then paste this in in the settings.py file of your project. We have not yet installed the firebase admin package. So let's do that. So use pip install firebase underscore admin. Now this might take some time to install. Nice. Now come to the code that we pasted in settings. About cred, type in cred underscore path equal to os.path.join then base dir and the credentials.json. And then in the second line, change this string to cred path. And by the way, you also need to import OS. Now go to the views, import messaging from Firebase admin. Then we'll have a new function. You can have any name that you want here. Inside this, we need four arguments, token, title, body, and image URL, which is equal to none. And inside this function, define a dictionary called data and inside that have a title and the value is our second argument title. Then body, have the value as our third argument body, then icon and the value of this should be the path to an image that you want as an icon if you want to. So now in the payload of our notification, we are sending a dictionary called data, which has our title, body and icon. Now you can wish to not have an image in your notification. So if image URL, the value of our key image is equal to our fourth argument, that is image underscore URL. Now we create a message object. So message equal to messaging dot capital M message the data equal to data, token equal to token. Now to send this notification, response equal to messaging dot send and pass in our message object that we just declared above. And for a response that we see in the shell, print data message sent and then pass in the response. So we now have a function that sends notification. So let's use shell and test this. So use two terminals for this. In the first terminal, have your server running and use shell in the second one. Let's import our views. Now we need to frame shell commands. So I suggest open a completely new text file. Now because I imported everything from views, my shell command starts from send data message and then pass in four arguments in double quotes. For the first one, grab the token that was printed in your console. And the second is the title, then the body, and then an image URL. So now if everything is working well, you should be receiving one notification that contains an icon that we declared here in the function, an image if you added one in the shell command, then the title and the body. Now the only thing that remains is saving tokens. And for that, we are going to develop an API endpoint. And from the front end, we are going to make an API call using fetch and then send the token. And then inside Django, save those tokens as an FCM device, associating them with some user. 
now there are some packages that handle both that is sending notifications and saving tokens but in my opinion django rest framework is the best way to handle apis so that's why we are going to use django rest framework so now let's install the django rest framework now in settings add rest underscore framework in the installed apps now we create an fcm device model so in models.py import capital user from django.contrib.auth.models then create a new class i am calling this as fcm device inside the bracket models.capital model define the first field that is user equal to models.foreign key capital user and then on delete equal to models.cascade and then the second field token equal to models dot char field and the max length equal to 25 then def underscore underscore str underscore underscore pass in self as a parameter and inside that return self dot token so now this fcm device will be displayed as a token in the admin dashboard now save this then make migrations and migrate Now for the API endpoint, we create a new URL. I save the path as save dash fcm dash token slash and then views dot then the name of the function. I am calling the function as save fcm token. Then dot as underscore view. Give it a name save dash fcm dash token. Now create a class based view in our views with the same name. Now in the views, we need to import four things. First, API view. From rest underscore framework dot views, then permissions from rest framework, then capital response from rest framework dot response, and then our FCM device model from the models. Now define the function with the same name that you described in the URLs. Pass in API view as a parameter, then permission classes. Equal to in square bracket permissions dot is authenticated. Then def post pass in self and request as parameters. Then token equal to request dot data dot get then token in double quotes. Then if not token and return the response error no token provided status equal to four hundred. Then fcm device dot objects dot update underscore or underscore create open a bracket put user equal to request dot user then a dictionary defaults the key is token pass in the value token close the bracket then return a response pass in message token saved and then a status of two hundred. So in this case permission is is authenticated means the api is going to be used when some authentication is provided then the token is something that we pass in as data from the api call and then if token is not available we want to print an error saying no token provided and otherwise the existing fcm device will be updated or a new one will be created for the current user and then return a response saying token saved now because we are saving the tokens associating them with some user to avoid problems we will mark the view that returns our web page as login required and now because the view is login required we need to create a super user and then sign in through the admin dashboard and now we'll be able to access the web page and now for the final round we create a javascript function in our front end client that makes an api call and saves the token so now in this case you do not need a proper token based authentication that you use in api so instead what you need is the csrf token so this is the function that returns the current csrf token 
I'm sorry this is something that I got from chat GPT so I cannot explain this and as it is you can see this is not something speakable so you can copy this so I have a link to the source code in the description of this video and this is the function that makes the API call constant save token and then pass in token as a parameter then fetch and inside this our API endpoint and then the method is post inside the headers have content type as application slash json then capital x dash csrf token and use the function that we just defined above that returns the csrf token then credentials include and then the body contains the fcm token that we are sending and below this this is some output if the save was successful the console prints token saved else it prints save failed now finally call this function inside the definition of request and send token inside the if condition below the console.log fcm token so save token in bracket pass in token as an argument and we are finally done now all the coding is done access our web page one last time in the console you should now see token saved let's check once in the admin dashboard oh sorry i forgot to register the model so go to the admin file of your app import fcm device from the models then admin dot site dot register inside the bracket pass in our fcm device go back to the admin dashboard reload and you should now see our fcm device click on that finally we see our first saved fcm token so three cheers for yourself we have finally reached your destination this is where i think we should stop you can like the video if you found this helpful if there's some other thing you want to learn in django and you think the setup is difficult or something you can let me know down in the comments subscribe to my channel for future tutorials be sure to follow me on my twitter same username topcodegeek i hope the tutorial was helpful thanks a lot see you next time